In this video, I'm going to go over hooks, fields, and methods for custom NPC scripting. I'm also going to go a little bit into how to read the API. Um, I'm no programmer, so I'm not going to pretend like I know every little detail about how the API is the way it is, but I do know enough to be able to navigate it and make scripts. Therefore, I'll be explaining the API from that perspective. So if any experienced programmers get mad about how I'm explaining the API, I'm sorry. So in short, Hooks are just a way to get the events that happen in the game to trigger your scripts. So for example, let me set up an interact hook with this guy real quick. Okay, so what this means is that whenever this NPC is interacted with, it's going to trigger this function. So hooks are essentially just functions, and the calls for the functions are the events that happen in the game world. So let me put event.npc say hi in this function here. Whenever this NPC is right-clicked, it's going to say hi. As we can see, there we go. Okay, so that's just the interact hook. What other hooks are there? If we click on the website link here in the scripter, it'll bring up the API page. Looks like this. If you scroll down here, you can see all the different hooks listed. Let's take the damaged hook here. Let's change that, and then we'll change our interact hook to our damaged hook. Now if we hit the NPC, then he says hi instead. Now something to note is that you can't use two of the same hook. So if I were to copy this hook here, I would set this one to say hi1 and this one to say hi2, and then we try to hit him, you'll notice he only says hi2. That's because you can only have one of each function name. So if we wanted to say both, instead we'd move both both lines of code here into the one damaged hook. And then as you can see, he said both high one and high two. Okay, so now let's talk about fields. It's kind of hard to give a definition that isn't super technical. The best definition I can give is that fields are parameters associated with an event. So I made this little diagram to try and help out. First, we have our hooks. These are the functions that we create that will trigger code when certain things happen in the game world. Then every single hook has its event parameter. This is just the codes version of the event that's taken place in the game world and all the things associated with it. Now those things associated with the event are what we call the fields. So how do we check what events have what fields? If we go back to the API page, here we can see the event names. If we copy one of these uh, event names, let's go with the interact event to start, and then we go over to the um, API page here. These are the different links for the API versions. I'm doing 1.12.2 right now, so we're just gonna go with that for now. If we go to the search bar and we type our event name here, we can get the event here. Now, don't worry too much about all the stuff at the start. Um, what you want is you wanna scroll down to see the fields. So here we can see the fields. The interact event has the player field, the NPC field, and the API field. Don't worry about how these are separated right here. That's just an organizational thing because the NPC interact event is also an NPC event. It's gonna throw the NPC in this different category. Don't worry about that. And pretty much all the events are gonna have the API as a, as a field. You don't need to worry about that too much for now. So the interact event here, it has two fields. It has the player and the NPC. That's the player who's doing the acting, acting and the NPC who's being interacted with. Let's take a different example. Let's go back to the scripting page here. Let's grab the damaged, exam, the damaged hook here. Actually, we need to copy the name here. There we go, the damage event. As you can see, the damage event here has many more fields. We have clear target, which just represents whether or not the NPC will forget about its attack target or not. The damage field right here, which represents how much damage is being done in the damage event. We have damage source right here, which is what type of damage is being dealt. So is it melee damage? Is it a projectile? Is it fire damage? Stuff like that. And then we have source, which is the entity that's dealing damage to the NPC. And because it's an NPC event, we have the NPC field down here and the API field down here. Now, fields are usually two different types of things, one that I'm gonna call simple values and one that I'm going to call objects. So for the damage event here, the damage here, that's just a float. A float is another way of saying just a decimal number, as is a double, I forgot to go over that in the first video. But damage is just a, it's a float, it's a number. This field is just a number. And the other fields here, damage source and source, these are objects. In custom NPC scripting, objects are prefaced by this capital I in front of them. So an I damage source is a damage source object, and an I entity is an entity object. Similarly, if we navigate through the NPC event submenu here, we can see that the NPC is itself an I custom NPC object. Now let's talk about methods. Methods act on objects, things like players, NPCs, even blocks and items. Those are also considered objects. So if we click on I custom NPC here, 
we can go to the iCustom NPC page here and we can see all the different methods associated with it. Now, these down here, these are inherited methods. Because the NPC is also an entity, it gets most, if not all, of the entity's methods. Same goes for the living entity and living entity base. Methods let us actually do stuff to these objects. Look here, you can see the, uh, the say method that we've been using so far. Actually, let me adjust the zoom here. Uh, this might help a lot. Here we go, there it is, the say method that we've been using so far. What you see in the parentheses here after the method name is the required input of the method and then a one word description of what that uh, input represents. In this case, we need a string that represents the message that the NPC is going to say. Over here on the left is the return data type of the method, if it has one. Usually the get methods are going to have a return data type. Here you can see the get home method has an integer return data type. That's what it stands for. Actually, let's do an example with get home x here real quick. Let's, let's copy that. Let's go back to our script here. Let's change damage back to interact. If we make a new variable here, we'll call it um, x home and set it equal to And then we copy it, event.npc.gethomex. So this here, this is the event hook, the hooks event. This is the first, the field that we're accessing from that event, right? If we go back to our, let's see, where's the fields page? Let's just search the interact, the NPC interact event. The NPC is the field that we're accessing from the event. So the event dot, then the field we want, and then the field, dot the method that we want. So that's going to return us our integer, the NPC's home coordinate. Here we go, the integer of the NPC's home coordinate. And then we'll set them up to say it when we right click it so we can just verify that it actually worked. And there we go. That's the X coordinate where he's standing, 271. So just to reiterate, uh, these types on the left will show you what they return. Sometimes they'll just return simple values here like get home X, get home, get, uh, get home Y, and get home Z those return integers. Other ones will return other objects, like get faction will return the NPC's faction as an object. Um, get stats will return the NPC's stats as an object, and so on. If it says void here, that just means that it does not have a return type. Usually these void methods are ones that actually do something. As we can see, the uh, say one is a void return type. That's because it's, it's putting a message in the chat. It's not grabbing a value for us. All right, let's go over method inputs again. Um, if we look at this say to method here, we can see that it requires two inputs, a iPlayer, so a player object type, and then a string as the message. So what this represents is the player that the NPC is going to say the message to, and then the message that the NPC is going to say. So let's, let's use this as an example. Um, I'm going to set it up wrong at first, and then I'm going to tell you why it's wrong, and then we're going to fix it. Okay, so event.npc say to Hankawoo, Okay, event.npc say to Hankawu, hey there. Hankawu is my username, by the way. Click on him, it's going to error. It's going to error because the code doesn't know what Hankawu is. This isn't an initialized variable, this isn't a string. Um, if you want to try it as a string, let's try it as a string here. So, trying my username as a string, that's also not going to work. The reason that that's not going to work is because this say to method wants the player as a data type, it doesn't want it as a string. So how do we get the player as an object or as a data type? I, I use them interchangeably. If we go over to the interact event here, we can say that the player field returns an iPlayer object. That's the player interacting with the NPC. So our player is equal to dot player. So now if we change this string here, which was wrong because the string is not a player data type, the string is just a word. If we change that to our new player who's interacting and then right click the NPC, there we go. He says the thing. Now, the most confusing part of custom NPC scripting is this relationship between events, fields, and methods, and the objects. So let's go back to our little diagram. As we can see, we have the hook, we have the event, and then the event has its associated fields. And then each of those associated fields, if they're objects, they'll have their own methods here. So we can see this, this field here, this is an object because it has methods. This here is also an object because it has its own methods. This one here, it doesn't have any methods. So that means this one must have just been a value like the damage number and the damaged event. Okay, now I think it'd be good to go over the two most common errors in custom NPC scripting. And those are 
giving methods the wrong inputs and calling methods on the wrong objects. So this first one we kind of already went over with our say2 example by giving methods wrong inputs. We tried to give um, the say2 method a string as an input or an undeclared variable as an input, whereas the say2 method wants the player object as its input. The second error here, calling methods on the wrong object, would be something like event.say2, because the event doesn't have any methods. The event only has field. The NPC is what has the methods. Another thing to note is this say2 method is exclusive to the NPC. If we went to our I player data type and look at the player's methods. The player doesn't have one of these say2 methods. So if we try to do event.player say2, this is also going to work because say2 isn't a method of the player, it's only a method of the NPC. So how do we look at the different fields and methods in the API to make sure we're calling them on the correct objects? Let's use the search bar here. Let's look at our say2 method here. As we can see, the say2 method here, it only acts on custom NPC object. Uh, you can ignore all the stuff before. You don't really need to worry about that. Let's look at another method here. Let's do get display name. So the get display name method, you can call it on all sorts of things. You can call it on a scoreboard objective, scoreboard team, um, a block, a player, or an item stack. Um, item stack just means an item. Okay, let's, let's end off with an extreme example here. Let's try and make it so we can change this NPC's melee strength uh, whenever we right click him. So uh, how we're going to go about starting that is we're going to search strength here in the search bar. Here we go. NPC melee, uh, that's get strength. Here we have set strength. Here we have set strength for melee. So I NPC melee, that means I NPC melee is a data type that we need to use. So we have set strength. We need to find the I NPC melee data type. I see melee. Now what's annoying is there are there's no way to search what methods will get you this melee data type, so we kind of have to do that on our own. So let's search melee here. There's a git melee here. And now as we can see, this returns an INPC melee object. So where are we right now? Right now we are in, let me scroll up here, we are in INPC stats. So how do we get INPC stats? Let's search stats here. INPC stats, custom NPC dot get stats. So in order to set our melee strength, right now we're in our NPC, so it would be event dot NPC dot get stats. Once we're in the stats, we can go dot get melee. Once we're in the melee, we can go dot set strength. So let's do that here. Let's go interact. Let's get rid of these here. All right, let's do something ludicrous like, uh, let's do 35. So right now, I haven't right clicked the NPC yet. I'll tell you when I've right clicked him. Right now, he's only doing one damage to me, right? Very little. Now I'm gonna right click him now. I right clicked him. And as you can see, he's, he's two shotting me. Okay, I think that's it. I've covered all the fundamentals. So for the rest of these tutorials, they'll be on specific topics. So let me know either through comments or through Discord if there's something you'd like me to cover, okay?